I'm joined by Megan Dugan Adele from New America Chicago. As you know, at the Chicago Community Trust, we've taken a stand on predatory lending because high interest rate lenders tend to be concentrated in Black and Latinx communities. And this is important as we consider closing the racial and ethnic wealth gap. So in those communities that have um, seen higher rates or a higher presence of these types of payday lenders or predatory lenders, um, where they often have more limited access to banking services or other resources in general. Um, what are some alternatives um, that could be offered um, to these predatory lending models, perhaps through FinTech and other innovative practices? Um, we know that people run into emergencies. You know, there are a lot of people that just can't make their checks stretch enough. Um, that's really common. Um, and so our coalition created the We Prosper Illinois website and resource guide to get information out to the community about what alternatives they do have. Because we, you know, from talking to people, we know that they don't always know what all is out there. Um, the predatory lenders are very aggressive, have been very aggressive in the past, have done tons of marketing, but people don't always know about other alternatives. So our resource guide basically includes three different types of resources. And this was really important um, to our partners in the coalition. Um, first, just helping sure people have um, information about how they can reduce their monthly costs. So you know, who, how they can work with different creditors to negotiate the amount they owe. Um, and there's also actually a lot of new resources for people who are facing a hardship because of COVID to help them pay, reduce their payments or give them a longer time to pay. And so, our resource guide on the website includes information about lots and lots of different resources for that bucket. Um, the second um, bucket of information we have in the resource guide is other sources of income or one-time infusions of cash for people who are in a bad situation. There's actually um, a lot of work to do, but there's still um, more money in, in stimulus dollars that have just become available to people that they can access by filing taxes. Even if they don't normally make enough money to file, they actually still can file and get um, different tax credits and things like that um, that are a one-time infusion of cash. And then um, finally, there are um, lower cost option, lending options for people. So that's the third bucket in, in our um, resource guide. A lot of them are FinTech options. They are online. Um, the American FinTech Council, um, all of which their members have agreed to charge less than 36% interest. Um, we've actually gone through and shared different types of lenders for different types of situations. So personal loans, um, major purchases, business loans, you know, all different kinds of situations. So there's a number of different FinTech providers um, that are actually available online. So that makes it easier for communities that don't have, you know, very good bank access in their community um, to access um, lower cost loans. Um, and that resource guide is available at weprosperil.org and it's in both English and Spanish. My last question kind of goes back to the first question that we were, um, got us going in the conversation, which was if the goal of the legislation is to protect black and um, Latinx wealth, how are we doing on that goal? And what can policymakers do next to build upon that goal? I would say that Illinois is doing great on capping interest rates so people don't have to pay two and three times their loan principal, especially when things are tough for them. Um, you know, another thing we know that um, in states that have an increase in their minimum wage, that, that can really reduce um, payday loan usage and other types of predatory loan usage. So I think Illinois, you know, we've made progress in that space. Um, what we need to do better is making sure people have other alternatives to predatory lending and also making sure they know about what their options are. Um, most small dollar borrowers are really low income. So in Illinois, about 48 in 2019, about 48% earned less than $30,000 a year and 70% of all small dollar borrowers um, earned less than $50,000 per year. So most of these loans are being taken out by people who are borrowing and borrowing again just to make ends meet. So as long as there's low paying jobs and discrimination, people are going to need help to bridge the gap between basic living costs and their paychecks. So what we're hearing from people we've interviewed and um, surveys with potential borrowers is that payday and title loans are really quick and really easy to get. And they aren't always sure what other options they have that are that fast. Um, so I think it's really time for legislators to think about different ways to help people in this, these situations and making sure there are other alternatives in Illinois. So um, obviously raising the minimum wage helped. Um, 
funding a loan guarantee program to help credit unions, banks, and nonprofits make more low-cost loans um, could be really helpful. So for example, the Illinois Treasurer's Office could run something similar to Ag Invest or other rural credit programs that they are running. Um, they could also create, the state could also create some type of an emergency fund for small businesses or individuals that could really be marketed in communities of color through nonprofits, through credit unions, through other, through FinTech would be amazing. Um, that could be really helpful. Um, using the Illinois Community Reinvestment Act to get more banks, credit unions, and mortgage companies lending to and investing in Black and Latinx communities would all be um, really important in that step. So there's actually a, quite a bit, and we have more um, recommendations in the report. 